Next question is from everyone's nerb. What's a good metric to know I'm gaining muscle and not excessive fat? Body fat tests. Nerd. Consistent body fat tests is the best metric that I can t that that will tell you that. When I, I say I consistent, yeah, you got to take do the do them the same time, you know, one same week way, apart, same method, same feeding beforehand and after. You know, make sure it's, everything's as equal as possible. The body fat tests of choice would be underwater weighing is probably the most accurate or consistent. The calipers would be the next one with some, with the same person testing you, by the way, because people have a little bit of variance how they test. Those bod pods are pretty accurate. And the electric impedance is probably the worst. Um, Those are and, most accurate, but strength and waist, like you recommend a lot, I think. Yeah. Is a, there you go. I was just going to say, because a lot of people are like, well, how do I test yeah, the body right, fat? Yeah, I take body fat every single week. It's yeah. going to be so hard. If but your strength is consistently going up and your waist size is going down or staying, or staying the, same. the same, you're probably, you're probably gaining right muscle track. and not yeah. body fat, I would say. Yeah. That's probably the, the, that's, the To me, ones. that's the, the cheap Cheapest, easiest way to consistently check on yes. it, right? So not everybody has access to a, a you know skin full calipers or a body fat test machine or whatever like that. And so even though that is the best, that is the gold standard, that is what I used to use when I was tracking and really diving deep into all this stuff. But I mean, you could easily just check your waist. And if your your strength is going up and your waist is staying the same or shrinking, like you're putting you're you're you're, you're putting in a pretty muscle. good position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Years ago, I did uh, back in the day. I used to do these really aggressive bulks. Um, when this was my twenties, and I'd go hard and I would eat everything and I get my body weight up. Like right now, I weigh about two oh six maybe, and I get my body weight up to like two thirty, two thirty five, <laughs> and it wasn't lean. <laughs> I will never show a picture, by the way, of these. So maybe, maybe <laughs> if you guys ever have them, you guys are sure. I think you could. I think you Google search it. But I look like there. a meatball. I but might anyway, have some in my library. But anyway, um, I remember I didn't track my body fat yeah. or muscle, but I was getting stronger relatively consistently. But I didn't measure my waist. Now here's the challenge with that: strength can also go up because you get better at exercise. You change your training. And fat actually, in some lifts, improves your leverage. Yeah. If my waist grows. Because of body fat, I can some often squat more as a mm -hmm. result if for you know for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. So when I finally did do the body fat test at the end, I found that I gained thirty pounds on the scale, but like seven pounds of lean body mass. So it turned out to be a fat bulk, uh, much more than I remember how bulk. discouraging that was when I because I did that for years. That was like the method: get crazy bulk and then try and get lean afterwards. And I remember the first time I did the dunk tank where I did a huge bulk just like that. I was up 230, 240, uh, and then cut all the way back down to like 205 or whatever, all to gain like one pound of muscle. Yeah. Like, it's so discouraging. Put your body Dude, through the whole oh, yeah. lean muscle takes such a longer period of time. I think oh people realize. Oh, my God. And then, and lean so, muscle. so easily goes away when you're living in a caloric deficit yep. and doing cardio and doing everything you can to burn. And that was part of when I learned that whole lesson, even with cardio and stuff, was like, man, you go so hard, you gain 20 pounds, 25 pounds on the scale, you know, all in the pursuit of building muscle. And then you go cut back down, and I end up with one more pound of muscle than what I started with six months before with all that hard grinding and yep. dieting. I mean, that's just that's crazy. Yep. Where you could have just gradually done it and easily accomplished the same thing. Yeah. So uh, waist is good for women. You can go waist uh, and hips. Only problem with hips is your butt will grow, so that can change that. For men, waist is actually quite reliable. If you measure your weight, you know who taught me this, by the way, mm. Doug. Oh yeah, Doug as a client came to me and when he, we started working together and I, we, I used to do circumference measurements on clients all the time, but Doug's like, oh yeah, I measure my waist. Uh, um, you know, I don't know if it was every day or every week. And as long as it stays around the same, you know, then I know everything's going good. And I'm like, oh, absolutely. If you look at the studies on this, you can actually, they can, I mean, it's not going to be nearly as accurate as body fat tests, but of all the other metrics that you could do that are easy and cheap for men, especially waist measurement, Mm. Will predict fat Especially gain as loss. We age, right? That's totally. Like yeah, no, I like that. Body fat. I like um, I like pictures too. I know, I know they're much more subjective. To do. You're so objective. That's why it's good for you, though. Yeah, you're so, good at being honest with right. Them. And I and I would take so I would my clients. I used to actually make them take photos every Friday, and then what I would do is I would show them like you know I'd wait like four weeks so they could see. I could see a week over week if we're making progress off of photos. And, but then I would point out areas like, see this area right here? See where you were holding yeah. more body fat? Look how you're leaning out here. Like, because they'd be like, I don't feel like it. I don't feel like I'm changing at all. Sure, you are. Look back at this picture right here four weeks ago. Look at this week's photos. Look at this. And then I would point out the differences between the two. And then they would, oh, okay, I see it. I so. had a, so I used to, I did that for a short period. I actually had a female client that was so like stressed out about whether or not she was gaining or whatever. So we did the same thing. 
And she was so upset because her jeans were getting tighter and tighter. So I pulled up her pictures and I showed her the difference between the two. And I said, and it was a side shot of her. And I drew, I, I drew on it and I said, here's your butt here. Here's your butt here. And she's like, oh my God, my butt's like two inches higher. So that's why your jeans are tighter. Yeah. You built some butt. So yeah. it, that can be effective. You just have to be objective. The problem with pictures is people are so often uh, distorted with how they view themselves that it's hard for them to make that, especially week by week. It's really hard yeah. to tell. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here and be sure to subscribe.